Hallelujah. Good night. Keep your heart open because the Spirit of the Lord wants to come and minister to you personally tonight. Hallelujah. Just have that open attitude. If you were expecting me to your house, you would have open attitude. As soon as you hear somebody coming in the door, you expect to go open the door for me. In that same attitude, expect the Holy Spirit to come. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thou, Father God, we so appreciate you. Hallelujah. We welcome you into the church. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, the Trinity of Heaven. Your word says, Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Glory to God. So I can dispel deaf and dumb spirit here that we will be able to comprehend every word spoken from the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 118 says from one I'm going to read from 1 through 9. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. 2. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, His mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. Glory to God. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man, what man can do to me. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. Glory to God. This is the heart of God. Verses 8 and 9. This is the heart of God. I googled it one day. What is the middle of the Bible? And it led me to Psalms 118 verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in in princes. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. He is our great defender. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Father, we just so thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace that, and your mercy that endures forever. Help us to bask in that tonight, Lord. As we sing songs of praise and worship tonight, Lord, draw near to us. You're an awesome God. Wonderful Lord. Blessed Redeemer. We love you and welcome you into the Cornerstone Church. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
There's no one like you. All other gods are dead. You are the only living God who confirms himself by his spirit inside of me. Glory to God. And I must take you. Awesome God. Wonderful Savior. Blessed redeem. Rule on me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, blessed Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Something wonderful is going to happen to you today. <laughs> Something wonderful is going to happen to you today. Hallelujah. 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 God is merciful. God is merciful. Hallelujah. Whew. Wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Before we give Larry uh, the rest of the evening, uh, I just want you to take time and just shake hands with each other. And there's an offering bucket for right here. And that the ministry of the Lord must go on. For the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is good news. It's so good. Such good news. The newspapers can't even write it up. <laughs> it's such big, big, big good news. They can't write all about it. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Meet uh, our guests and welcome everybody. Good to see all of you. And we'll give you a time to go to the offering bucket and welcome our guests. Welcome everybody.
word of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. At least in North America, in the United States of America, Larry and Pat cannot go any farther north on land. <laughs> We're the farthest north as possible as you can possibly go and welcome to the North Slope, to the top of the world, Barrow, Alaska. We so welcome you. I just want to take a minute that um, Larry and Pat will be here through Wednesday evening. So we'll have services each night at 7 o'clock. Um, invite a friend, tell a friend, and bless somebody. And I won't waste any more of my own time because we want our speakers to have all the time they need here. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a little southern boy raised in the south. Nobody gets in a hurry. <laughs> We've lived in New England where everything is 90 miles an hour, and that's their slow speed. <laughs> On the highways, too. But that's another story itself. I don't like to get in a hurry. Yeah. I don't like to rush here, rush there, do this, do that, because you're going to miss something if you do. I just, I, you know, my mind is weird. And if you know me longer, you say, yeah, his mind is weird. <laughs> but I was raised with a grandfather, my mom's dad, that used to use life, farm life, country life, to teach the gospel. And so a lot of the things that I say are a lot of idioms that, that he just, and bits of wisdom that my grandfather would just drop in, mm -hmm. that stuck with me from my childhood. You know, and I'm 70 years old, so... You know, my brain is the reason it's weird. It's so full up. I gotta go through the file cabinets every once in a while. But as as was talking just now, I I remembered I was talking about going so fast and not taking time to to see life. I mean, you know, we we rush through life and we miss life. Yeah. I had an agriculture teacher, Mr. Johnson, crazy guy. Love the man. But he says, he says, you guys are so blind. He says, you don't see things. He said, I can be going down the road 90 miles an hour, and I can go past a farm. I can tell you how many buildings they got, how many cows they had, how many cows that they had were pregnant. He said, I can tell you how many bulls they had. I can tell you, I can tell you how many gallons of milk they give. <laughs> he says, you didn't even see the first cow. That thought has stuck with me all through my life. We need to slow down and look and see what God's doing. Amen. You might miss something. So never get in a hurry. I know a lot of churches, you know, I, I, I see people when, when we've traveled around and when we'll be sharing, I see people look at their watches. Alabama, we were preaching in a church there, and, and I was just beginning to wax eloquent. <laughs> and sitting over here, there was a family of six, a mom and dad and four kids, all staircase. The oldest one was probably 15, 16. And I was just, I mean, I was driving the point home, and, I, the, and at least at that time, this is a long time ago, people, so... I've learned a lot in the anointing sense, but I, I really was waxing very eloquent. 
And, and all of a sudden, he looks at his watch, leans forward, looks at his wife, and nods. The wife, the two sons, and the two daughters look back, nod, get up, and walk out. I've never seen this before. And I'm, I'm in the middle of my waxing. And And I turned around, and Brother Rodney, the pastor, was sitting on the podium behind me, and I did like this. He says, don't worry about it. They do it every week. I, but I thought, had a thought, how many times do we put God in a box in time and say, God, you've got 15 minutes to move and stir me. If you don't do it, it's too late. I'm, gone. I'm out of here. Never, ever, ever get in a hurry. Wait on God. That's right. The scripture says, they that wait oh, on the Lord Amen. will renew their strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run yeah. and not grow weary. Fast pace tires you down. Waiting on the Lord strengthens you. In a church service, just wait on God. Just wait on God. I don't know if you have any around here, but in 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 the area that I lived in, we had a church group that were called the Quakers. And the Quakers, their services were called waking services. Where everybody would come and it was set. And they would just wait. Mm -hmm. And when the Spirit of the Lord would move somebody, they would get up and speak. They would sit down and they would wait. They might be there all day long, but they waited on, God, on the Lord until they heard what God had for them to hear that day. We're wanting, we're wanting to meet, uh, meet this church at lunch. We, so we leave, we get out at this time. We want to... We want to make sure the restaurant has all the food. We, we set our clock and we set our services and we get out by that time. Thank God this restaurant's with a lot of food because we didn't get out of here this morning until two, after 2 o'clock. Amen. It was afternoon. But God had something to do. God wanted to touch some hearts. God wanted to touch some lives. Two people got saved this morning. Two people got set free from alcohol. Two other, some other people were healed. Don't get in a hurry. Amen. We got eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. We got eternity. Amen. Honey, come in and just share and, and <coughs> sing the song that the Lord's led on your heart tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. On now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. I tell you, I thank God for what he did last night, Amen. how he met with us last night. I thank him so much for how he met with us this morning. Amen. Wasn't that praise team wonderful, how they Ooh. led us into the presence yes. of God? Yes. I'm telling you, when you worship the Lord and his presence comes, that's what we wait for. That's, you know, when we go to church, I mean, yeah, we study, we have sermons all together, but sometimes the Holy Spirit will direct you in a completely different, I don't want you to preach what you studied all week. I want you to say this. I want you to do this. I want... You know what? Long time ago, we decided that he was the pastor of the church, the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're just servants of his, instruments that he can use. And so when we go, we say, Father, what are you doing today? If you don't show up, you remember the people, Moses said, God, if you don't go with us, I'm going. I'm not doing a thing unless you're with me. Amen. Well, that's the way I feel. We need the Holy Spirit moving us, speaking to us, and he wants to do it. 
And when we worship the Lord and his presence descends, you know the difference when the presence of God comes into a place, don't you? Yeah. The whole atmosphere changes. Yeah. Yes. God is in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And anything can happen when the presence of God is in the house. We told you this morning, we're so thankful the Lord sent us to Alaska. First time we've ever been in Alaska. It's awesome. It's a beautiful place. But the most of the thing is there are beautiful people here. You're beautiful, beautiful people. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> how you can go, I don't know how many hours. I mean, one of them flights was five hours. And one was a few hours. And then three more hours. And I'm thinking, are we ever going to get to Vero, Alaska? But you know what? It doesn't matter where you go. When you come in contact with children of God, we're all the same. Amen. You feel the presence of God. He's with you. You love God's people wherever they are. You know? It doesn't matter what nationality they are. Amen? Amen. It Hallelujah. doesn't matter the color of anybody's skin. Hey, there's a lot of people going to have a rude awakening when they get to heaven. <laughs> hey, man, we're all made in the image of God. Amen? And we're children of God. And we are to love each other. Love each other. But I just wanted to say, I'm going to sing this old song. But before I do, I'm going to tell you why I sing this song. This morning, we had people lined up praying for people with any needs. But we were praying for people to be healed. Because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Didn't he? Yes. Amen. To every creature, to preach the gospel. And included in that gospel was also to lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Amen. 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 He not only died to set us free from our sins, but he also came to heal us any time that we need healed. Amen. I tell people, God wants you well and he wants you healed because he needs you out there all around Amen. you to preach the gospel. Amen. If you're sick on a sick bed or so in much pain that you can't move, you can't go tell anybody. So God wants you healed. Know that he does. And I'm going to tell you, I believe in healing because I have been healed. My husband, when we got saved, he had an incurable stomach disease and dying at a very young age. And God healed him. I sat there and saw his chair shaking like crazy. And his skin was like blood, like, I mean, just red. Every place that you could see was just red. And God healed him. And when we got home that night, on the way home, now this man lived on baby food and water and pills. And when it, on the way home, he stopped at a pizza place and ordered a large pizza. He ordered a big, huge Coca-Cola thing. And here's the girl that just got saved, didn't know anything about faith or anything. You know, we're going home. And we get in the house. He puts it on the kitchen table. He goes to the bathroom. Now, I'm not telling everybody to do this. This is what he did. He goes into the bathroom. He takes all of his very expensive medicine, and he pours it down the toilet and flushes it, Right? Then he goes in and sits down at the kitchen table and consumes that whole pizza and drinks this Coca-Cola. And here is his newly born again, wonderful, loving wife, <laughs> said to him, almost like Job's wife, if you're not healed, you're going to die tonight. <laughs> now that's what I, that is what I said to him. But you know what? He did not die that night. He did not hurt that night. He did not have any discomfort whatsoever. God miraculously healed him. And he went to his doctor that had taken care of him for years, a Christian man. He had taken care of him since he's a baby. He's the one that diagnosed Larry. Larry went back to him. He did all the tests to prove that he was healed and that he had a brand new stomach and all the stuff in his, he, his doctor took his medical chart out and wrote across the whole chart that said, healed by the hand of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
That is how we were birthed into the kingdom of God. So whenever our five-year-old son, we brought him home from church one Sunday morning, and whenever I put him to bed, he wasn't feeling well, and I went into the kitchen, and we were sitting down to eat, and our little young Chad, he was just a baby, and the moment that I started to sit down, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go to Jason, the devil is killing him, trying to kill him. I ran into the bedroom, and there is my five-year-old on his back, and his whole body is shaking and vibrating, and his eyes are big, wide open, and his body shook, and, and then all of a sudden, the life left him. There was no life, no breath, nothing. He was gone in just an instant. I screamed for Larry. He grabbed him up. By this time, I'd run out of our house next door, a pastor friend of ours, and I'm screaming, come, Jason has died. And whenever I got back, Larry was on the porch with our five-year-old, and by this time, all of our Catholic neighbors who heard us screaming had come out and were all over and saw Larry with our son. And Larry had Jason up on his hands like this. Jason was stiff as a board. That's how fast the light, he was almost gray, blackish color. And he was gone. And Larry, tears were flowing from his face. And he said, Father God, you gave him to us. And you said that you had a call of God in his life. And I do not believe that this is you. I believe that this is the devil. And I command that spirit of death to leave him in the name of Jesus. He only prayed that one time. And when he did, Jason's chest just went up. You could see that God had put air back in that child's body. And when I turned around, I was praying in tongues. I didn't care if all these neighbors heard it. Let me tell you something. When you're fighting the devil, you don't stand there and get embarrassed because you speak in tongues. You thank God that you speak in tongues. And I began to just pray in tongues and pray in tongues. And when I turned around and I was praying in tongues, I bet you there were 25 of my Catholic neighbors on their face, on the ground, because they saw that miracle with their eyes that God brought that child back to life. He carried him right next door to a Catholic hospital, and they got in, and we're doing some things to him, doing tests, and they said that that child had sudden brain death, and he should, they said, when he wakes up, he'll probably be, you know, if he wakes up, he'll be a vegetable. He won't be able to function, and we just said, that's not true, and I stood by him in that emergency room, and he began to he wasn't really fully conscious, but he was making noises. And you know what I did? All those doctors and nurses all around, I didn't care. I started, this is what I did. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones turn and I'll sing that song. And I'll sing that song. And the peace and presence of God came down in that emergency room. And those nurses were doing this thing that they do. <laughs> they put that child in a bed and he lay there. All of our pastors were there around his bedside. The doctors and the nurses, there were probably 20 people, waiting to see when this child would open his eyes or if he would and what would happen. And when he opened his eyes, he had oxygen running to him and had a, like a board. When he opened, the last thing that he remembered was being in children's church. And they were seeing, this is the day that the Lord has made that morning. When he woke up, he didn't look at any of us. He just kind of woke up. And we saw his little arms go up. And he said, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord, and he sang that chorus, and all of us just wept, just wept. And we later, he was very intelligent. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit two weeks before this happened. The devil wanted to kill him. 
but God raised him up, and we saw that with our own eyes, and so did our neighbors. And so you can't tell me that God is not real. You cannot tell me that you can't go to your Heavenly Father in Jesus' name and receive what Jesus paid for. He paid for it. And so when we don't pray for people to be healed, when we don't believe God to heal us, it hurts the heart of God. Because he wants us well. Amen. Amen. He wants us well. Amen. One more thing. Can I tell just one more thing? Because we, I tell you, you already know that I've been healed from breast cancer twice. But in 18 years ago, we were a pastor in a little church, working full-time jobs. And our, we just had our first grandbaby, Michaela. And we had been to the hospital to see her. And on Monday morning, I was going back to work because I took a week off from work ready to go to work, taking my husband's dog up this big embankment at the apartments where they made you go to take your dog out. And I took one of the bags, and I reached over and was cleaning up what she did. And we were right on the edge there because that's where she went potty. And I had the leash in her hand, my hand, and I was bent all the way over. She saw a dog down on the street. And she lunged, now this was 30 feet down, straight down with all kinds of little shrubbery and all kinds of stuff that was on there. I, it jerked me forward and I don't, could not tell you how many revolutions that I fell over and over and over and over until when I hit the ground, I don't remember it, but my head hit the pavement. And the doctor said that in itself should have killed me. But I was 50 years old, you know, great health, very busy in my life. It broke the first four vertebrae, crushed them in my neck. Did an enormous amount of damage in the lower part of my back and both my legs. Let's just say I was in really, really bad shape. And when my husband got to the hospital and I was swollen all over, and out, and he just wept because he could not believe that this had happened. And for a year, I was in bed, and he came home every two hours, bedpan, praying over me, and praying over me. I could not move my arms and legs. He would move my arms and my legs and pray in Jesus' name. The doctor said, you're never going to walk again. You're never going to walk again. And he would pray for me. And while he was gone during the day, I would listen to worship tapes. I would worship and soak. And I almost wrote the Bible again. Every healing scripture I wrote in one journal after another that whole year. Every scripture. I believe you, Jesus. I'm telling you this tonight. That when you're praying for healing and it doesn't come immediately, do not give up. Amen. Do not ever give up. Sometimes healing comes gradually. And so, you know, it, it doesn't always happen just like that. But if you believe God, I'm telling you, when the doctors tell you there's no hope, in God there is hope. Amen. He is our healer. Yes. There's always hope in the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, I kept believing him. I'm not talking about just memorizing something and saying words. I'm talking about getting a relationship with God that's inside of you, knowing that he's with you and he is your very source of your life. And I just knew he kept telling me. I said, Lord, I believe you're telling me that you're healing me. And I kept hearing, yes, I'm healing you. I'm healing you. It took a year like that. And one Sunday morning, I mean, I wasn't able to go to church. I wasn't able to go preach. I wasn't able to do anything but pray, write in my, in my um, journals. And I'm going to tell you, one Sunday morning, no, two days before, we had, he had got, got me in a wheelchair, had taken me to a specialist, and a spe well, more specialist, and threw this thing up there. He looked at the x-ray, and he turned around. I was in a, a, a motorized wheelchair. He threw the x-ray up there, and he was a real big, well-known neurosurgeon. And he turned around, and he looked at me with so much contempt 
And he said, you're 50 years old. Isn't it time for you to grow up? And I thought, he said, you need to accept the fact that you are never going to walk again. Never going to walk again. And you need to accept it. And you know, right out of my mouth, and it wasn't real loud at first. He was angry. But it was just like the devil speaking through his mouth to me. And I said, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. And he hurled around at me. I thought he's going to hit me. And he said, what did you say to me? And this time, the boldness of God, because this time I knew it was the devil speaking to me. I looked him right in the eye, and as loud as I could say, I said, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. And he threw the x-rays at me, and I put my little finger on that thing on that wheelchair, put it on fast, and I got myself down that hall as fast as I could out of that place, and I thought, one day I'm going to walk back in this building, and I'm going to show you what my God can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, I believe in healing, and two days after that experience, my husband was at church, and I had been just praising and worshiping the Lord, still saying, Lord, I know you're going to heal me. And that's when an angel of the Lord came into my room and sat on my bed. Just sat on my bed and took me, laid his hand right on my hand, and looked at me and said, get up out of that bed. And I said, Lord, but I can't. He said, you're going to get out of that bed. You're going to go to physical therapy. And you're going to walk. You're healed. And I tell you what, I thought I was going to be raptured right then. I thought the Lord has sent an angel to speak to me, and he must be planning to just take me to heaven. Because I thought if that ever happened to me, that's what would happen. But if God knew that a long year of waiting, and I needed something that day after encountering that devil that told me that I would never walk again. And Jesus sent an angel to say, you are going to walk again. I told Larry to make an appointment, tell my doctor that I want to start physical therapy. And they had to roll me into a pool, because I, you know, and they did physical therapy in a pool. And very shortly, I was on a walker. I mean, I was so happy to be on a walker. I couldn't, I mean, I got, I went into church and everybody, there was uh, probably four or 500 people in that church that had been praying for me. And when they heard that I was in the house and when I came through the side pushing that walker, it was like a hush. And when I got over and the pastor led me up to the platform, all of a sudden in one accord, there was a shout that went up to heaven. It was so glorious to praise God for what he had done. Amen. That it was God that had done it, and no man could take the credit for it. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I kept on with physical therapy, and I graduated from a uh, walker to a cane. And I'm now 68 years old, and I'm still on my feet, and I'm still praising God. And guess what I do in my home church, and I might do it here. I dance before the Lord. I'm crazy about worship. People say to me, oh, they dance. She dances. I said, let me tell you something. If you laid on your bed for a year and could not move your body and could not walk, and your God delivers you and sets you free and gets you back on your feet, you tell me that you can't dance before God? I'm telling you. We, you read in the Old Testament all in Psalms. They forgot about themselves and got into worship. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's not about me. It's about him. Yes. And I tell you, I don't let other people intimidate me from worshiping God. Amen. 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 And our people love it. I think some people are starting to bounce. And my <laughs> husband, he dances before the Lord sometimes, but he's really good at bouncing, aren't you? <laughs> but, but worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Amen. Worship him for what he's done for you and be thankful. And when the devil, when the 
devil speaks through other people and tell you can't, and God, it's in his word, and it says you can, you believe God. You believe him. Amen? So I didn't mean to go this far, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit to encourage you. That's why we give testimonies. Do you know that testimonies are prophetic? When you begin to tell what God has done in your life, there might be somebody that's listening by uh, this video streaming or somebody in here or some relative will hear this testimony and God will use that as a seed, a prophetic word to them. If God did it for her, he can do it for me. And that's why I share my testimony. Amen. Because he is a God that's worthy of our praise. And I, we just need to tell people where we have been in God and how he can be with us. And he'll always be with us. And when the devil tries to rob you, you just get back up. Amen. Isn't that right? Get back up and keep going. Amen. If you fail the Lord, he's there to forgive you. If you fail a million times, he's still there to forgive you. Amen. 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 Main thing is keep running to him. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to try to sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I tell you, I feel fire up here. Is it on? Yeah. So y'all pray for me. Just turn it up so I can hear Bless it. Her, Lord. This is about a crippled man, and I was a crippled woman, so when I sing this, I get excited. <laughs>
along with me. That woman's crazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. You can't get excited in the house of God. Where can you get excited? Hallelujah. We shout at football games. We shout at basketball games. We kind of shout at baseball games. <laughs> And you don't even remember what the score is a month from now. <laughs> you don't remember who scored the touchdown. You don't even remember who hit the home run. You don't even remember who got who struck out. You don't remember who shot the, that winning basket. You don't remember anything like that. But yet people get excited. What can why can't we get excited about what God does for eternity that lasts Hallelujah. forever? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, it's all right to get a little crazy in church. Amen. It's all right. It's okay to get your bop on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Down south, it, 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 how many of you remember Hee Haw? <laughs> remember the Ethan and the Arthur? It's okay to get your feet <laughs> That was early day rap. It's okay. God has a sense of humor. Amen. How do you know? Look in the mirror. God is good. God is good. Amen. I love laughter, okay? Amen. The Bible tells us that, that laughter makes our bones fat. In other words, it makes you healthy. Amen. Doctors will tell you laughter makes the endorphins in your, in your brain go throughout your body, and it makes you healthy. Hallelujah. You may not know this, but all, all across the United States, there are places now called laughing rooms. <laughs> Christian laughing rooms where people go in and laugh right, I love it. and get healed. Amen. <laughs> Laughter is good. Yeah. I remember a pastor was um, was holding a conference at, at, actually his district council years ago in Pennsylvania and he was preaching on speaking good to yourself. Being glad with self. And he says, every morning when you get up and you, and you get out of bed and you go to the bathroom, stand in front of that mirror and say, you're wonderful, you're beautiful. And some little lady in the background says, oh, you want us to lie now? No, you're not lying. God wants you blessed. God wants you healed. And God wants you happy. So don't worry about looking silly in church. Just dance before God. Just get happy with God and enjoy His presence. Hallelujah. 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 On Saturday night, we talked about the seventh well, the seventh wave of revival that God is beginning to to move across this nation and even around the world. And how he's pulling the presence of his anointing and his anointings into the house. Amen. And how we are to how we are to receive that. And we talked about what God is doing in this moment and in this time, that he's all the anointings of previous Previous outpourings in America are now being poured out again for a final move. I believe a final move. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord's known his next thing on his calendar is to tell Gabriel to blow the horn that his son will come and we will be caught up together and meet him in the sky. I believe that the next thing 
is the rapture of God that's on God's calendar. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of people that will argue that with me, but I won't argue with you. I say, you don't want to believe in the rapture? That's your problem. I believe I'm going up with Jesus. And I believe that, and the Bible talks about a great revival breaking out. And I, and I believe that we're going to see a move of God across this nation. That America, one more time, is going to be a nation, one nation under God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I'm so glad that God's back in the White House. Phew. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. But God needs to be in every house. Amen. So my prayer is, God, from the White House to every house, you be there. Amen. And then we talk, we talked this morning about the holiness of God and, and how, uh, how God is, is moving in, in bringing holiness back to the church. And, and I wanted to share, we're, I'm not going to preach very long this evening because I want us to, I want us to get before our God with our faces down and, and, and interceding. But I'm going to share with you something that the Lord just shared with me just the other day. This is fresh. I haven't, I haven't even preached this at, at Foothills yet. <laughs> FCC has not heard that. This is what the Lord just gave me. This is what I heard him say. A wave of travail is about to crash into the church. And when I heard that, the Lord began to show me that a wave of trail is going is coming in and it's going to prepare the way for a holiness and fear of the Lord to be restored back into the church. The church has lost its ability to prevail before him. Amen. Travail means crying out to God. It means getting getting self aside and saying, God, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray until I touch you. I'm gonna intercede for my family. I'm gonna intercede for my loved ones. I'm gonna intercede for my state. I'm gonna intercede for my city. I'm gonna intercede for my church. I'm gonna pray, God, until I hear the answer. I believe that God is looking for intercessors in this last day. And let me tell you something. I believe there's some people in this, in this church right now that God has called you to be intercessors. And intercessors are the ones who get bloody in the back. You may not be physically cut or bruised, but let me tell you something. You're going to war in the kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness, and it's a battle, church. Amen. There's a warfare going on. The heavenlies are raging right now over America and other countries. The heavenlies are raging because the angel, there's an angelic warfare going on trying to keep God's word from touching hearts and touching churches and churches reaching God. Amen. It's time, church, that we travail and get on our faces before God and say, God, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit praying until the answer comes. Be like that. Lord, I'm going to check me out, but I'm not going to stop until the answer because I know that you are going to answer my prayer because your word says you hear the prayers of the saints and you turn your ear and you oh, listen and you will send the answer. Yes. Yes, but we need to get up to a place of deep repentance in the church. I believe the church needs to repent. Amen. The church needs to repent. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. The church needs to wake up and repent for its laziness. It's work to pray. It's hard to pray. Oh, it's easy to pray over your food. Because you know when you say amen, you're going to stuff your face. That's easy. It's easy to pray. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to think if I should die. I, that's easy. But when you've got loved ones that are trapped in drugs, that are trapped in prostitution, that are trapped in, in all kinds of perversion, if you there's a warfare because their souls are in the in the dangling of God, in, in the enemy's holding them over. Hellfire is reaching up. It's hard to pull them out of the hellfire and get them set free. It's gonna take work, it's gonna take 
travail. Yeah. It's going to take intercession. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I believe that it's going to be a place of birthing. Don't get don't don't get too excited right now. <laughs> it's going to be a birthing. Amen. You know what kind? The church needs to be birthed with no toleration for sin. Amen. No toleration for sin. That's the problem in the church world today. We tolerate sin. Amen. Hallelujah. You heard on Saturday night that I was raised in the Methodist church, and I love the Methodist church. I love my heritage. I love John Wesley's teaching. I read John Wesley's diary at least once a year. I go through it, him and Whitfield, and, and I read the writings of these guys. Men, these guys were holy men before God. They touched God. They knew God. But you all know the trouble that that denomination is going through right now. There's a major split that's going on. Gay marriage. Lesbian, LGBTQ, RSV, XYZ. I don't like him taking my alphabet. But they're allowing this and it's okay. You got you gotta walk in love. Yeah, you do. God you love. God loves them, yes. But God's love does not tolerate sin. If God does not tolerate sin, the church should not tolerate sin. And say, okay, that's okay, brother. That's okay, sister. God loves you no matter what. Yeah. yeah. But if you die in that sin, you're going you're gonna to burn in hell for eternity. Amen. You don't hear hell preached in church anymore. We're going to spend eternity somewhere. Amen. I'd rather decide now that I'm going to spend eternity with God and give my life to Jesus Christ and have him take all the sin and all the issues out of my life and then set me free. Then, tr then try and say, well, I can, I can sin. Just. People are trying to say, not saying, is this sin or is that sin? They want, they're wanting to know how much sin can I do and still get to heaven? You know how much? Zip. Nada. Nyet. No matter what language you speak. I don't know what it is in, in, in your native tongue, but it's still no. None. <laughs> That's, the, that's my that's my experience in languages. I know yes and I know no. But we got we got to have a birthing in the church that we do not tolerate sin. We love the sinner, yes. But we got to you really love them when you tell them that that lifestyle is sin. So we got to prevail before God. Look at some scriptures. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. You might be saying, well, I don't know exactly how to pray. How, how do I intercede for these situations? How do I intercede for my loved ones? How do I intercede uh, for the needs in, in my area, in my family, in my church, in my nation? Romans 8, verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Sometimes we don't have the words. The Holy Ghost will partner with us. The Holy Spirit will partner with us. 
and he will give us the word. We just begin to speak in other tongues. We don't know the English, but he knows the heavenly language and God will hear. And we just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And God knows exactly what to do with it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. There, are, there are many times that in prayer lines that we've, we've had over the years, I don't know how to pray for some people. I don't know. I don't know how in my own finite language, my own finite ways of communion, I don't know what to say. So I just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. My partner, the Holy Spirit, knows exactly what to say. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what Romans 8, 26 is telling us. In our times of intercession, we don't know how to pray for America. We know what America needs. It needs Jesus. But how do we pray? How, how do we war in the Spirit? We war in the Spirit by praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Now here's intercession. Jesus gives an example. Being in anguish, he, Jesus, prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. That's agony. That's agonizing in prayer. You see, Jesus knew that he was about ready to go to the cross. He knew the pain. He knew the suffering. He knew all that was getting ready to happen to him. And I think it even goes beyond that. I think it goes beyond the pain that he was going to experience physically. I think it goes beyond all the piercing and all the ridicule and all the stripes upon his back and all the nails being put in his body and, and, he, and the sword. He, it was beyond that. He was sweating drops of blood because he was agonizing for a people. Amen. He was agonizing for you. He was agonizing for our life. He said, God, I will, I, will, I will go. I will do it. I will take their sin upon me. I will take their sin. Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We need to agonize in this warfare. Y'all don't have Burger King around here, do you? Eh, that's a good thing. <laughs> Facebook just shut me down. But, but uh, Burger King used to have a slogan, mm -hmm. My Way. They, they, one of the early advertisements would show somebody walking up to the counter and they're looking and all that, 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 going through the menus and, you know, and they're standing there and the guy's getting ready to take their order and they said, okay, I want this, but I want it my way. I want it with this, I want it with that, I want it with this, I want it with that. I don't want this, I don't want that. In America, I believe that, and even in the church, we, we, we live in the Burger King uh, mentality. I want it my way. We live in instant society. Instant soup, instant coffee. Oh, that's nasty stuff. Who, who drinks instant coffee? You gotta cook that stuff. They even have instant eggs. You're right, Em. Yeah. Have you ever tried that stuff? Instant pancakes. I had one of those one time. I tried to figure out which cardboard box company they got it from. Yeah. I want it now. I want it quick. I want it this moment. Sometimes we've got to wait on God and let God do what God needs to do. God has to orchestrate. God has to move people around. God has to put this person in place and that person in place and, and get this going and get that going and get people submitting so that we can get what God wants for us now. Hallelujah.
But we, we, don't, we don't want that. We want to pray those easy prayers and, and, and get the answer now. Some things are now, yeah. All of us like the miracles. But sometimes we've got to walk this thing out. If getting saved was just to get you to heaven, the moment you got saved, the moment you asked Jesus to come in your heart, why didn't God just take you home then? If that's what salvation is about, salvation is given so that we can now walk this thing out as a testimony of the goodness of God in our life of what God can do. We are a testimony. Our salvation is just the open door to get us in to walk in the testimony before man so that they can also. Look at Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. My children... Paul is talking to the church at Galatia. Amen. My children of whom I travail, there's that word again, of whom I travail again until that Christ shall be formed in you. I wish, I was wishing indeed to be present with you presently and to change my tone because I am perplexed as to you. Paul saw a problem in the church of Galatia. He says, I travail, I pray, I agonize for you because there's a need in the church. We need to agonize. You need, can, I, can I tell you? You need to agonize for CCC. You need to agonize for Cornerstone Christian Church. You need to agonize for the people that should be here. You need to agonize for the leadership. You need to agonize for a move of God. You need to get down before God and say, God, I'm not getting up until I know that you're beginning to move and begin to flow and the Holy Ghost anointing is in us. I'm not giving up until it's here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Pastor, you sure do shout a lot. Woo. I actually had somebody come up to me after service. Yeah, I do shout a lot. I'm quiet other times. I'm saving it up. I'm really a quiet person. I'm really a wallflower. If you believe that. But I am. Basically, I am a quiet person. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. I'm scared to death when I get in front of people. <laughs> Until the Holy Ghost shows up. I'm like Moses. I ain't preaching God unless you're there. Hallelujah. Put yourself aside. Just be willing to be used of God. I love, I love the spirit that I feel in this church. We, we love it. We love the anticipation. We love the expectancy. We, we love the Holy Ghost anointing. I can see it in your faces. I'm seeing the same expressions on your faces that I'm seeing in our home church at, at FCC. But we need more. Amen. The word of God says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And, and we say, oh, that's cool, that's neat. But look it up in the original. It doesn't just say be filled. Yep. It means in the Greek, be being continually filled. Hallelujah. 
be being continually filled. We don't have, in the English language, we do not have the English syntax. We do not have the, the derivation of the verbs uh, to, to, to speak it that way. We have to add all these words just to get the same point across. <laughs> Be being continually filled. You know why they put it that way? We leak. <laughs> We leak. <laughs> the world will drain you. Yes. Family will drain you. Yes. Co-workers will drain you. Yes. That's why we need to be being continually filled with the Holy Ghost. So we need to pray. You need to be praying, and, and we're and we're our church is to be praying for this church that you're going to be being continually filled with the Holy Ghost in this place until God has got everybody that belongs here filled with the Holy Ghost, kicking devils. You need to be a devil kicking, devil stomping, devil rebuking, devil casting out congregation because there's a lot of devils in barrels. There's a lot of devils in Alaska. There's a lot of devils around and they need to be cast out and it takes a spirit filled Holy Ghost baptized believer to do it. You can't do it without the Holy Ghost. And the way we get more of the Holy Ghost is we get down before God and say, God, I ain't getting up here until I've had my fill today. I leaked out yesterday, and I need today's anointing. Back to the reason why I shout. You thought I had forgotten. No. I had somebody a few years ago say, Pastor, why do you shout so much? I say, and he said, God's not deaf. And I says, no, but he's not nervous either. Whoa. And I'm not speaking. I'm speaking to the devils. And I want them to hear every word that I say. I don't want them to be get confused. I don't want them to look at one another and say, did he say that? <laughs> I want them to hear every word that I say. I want them to understand every word I say. Devil, you don't belong here. You belong in hell. And that's where you're going to end up. Because my God is going to come and cast you there. And you don't belong here now. This is God's property. How many of you ever had the devil knocking at your door? Ooh, come on. Yeah. I don't answer that door. If I know that the devil is knocking on my spirit, I don't listen. <laughs> I told you my mind is weird. I just had I just I just had a vision of the three little pigs. <laughs> Lord help him. How many of you know the nursery rhyme the three little pigs? The big bad wolf on the outside, I'm gonna huff and I'm gonna puff and I'm gonna blow your hair down. And the three little pigs says, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> you see, God is building this house. I'm one of the stones that is fitly framed by the master craftsman. He's building us up as a spiritual body, spiritual stones fitly framed and fitly formed to fit in. I watched a stone mason years ago take a rock. He was building the outside facade of this house and he was using steel stone. And he picked up that rock and he backed up and he looked at that house and he looked at the stones 
that were there, and he, he, he took that trowel and he, he made a mark on that stone and he angled that stone and he angled that trowel in just a certain way and he said, Pop! And some of that stone came off. And he looked and he moved it and he said, Pop! And he looked at it and he moved it and he put it in place and it fitly framed there. And I asked him, why do you do that? Isn't that going to take forever? He says, Larry, he said, if I didn't do that. He says, matter of fact, it is so tightly fit, I don't even need to put mortar. It will stay there because I made it to stay there. I have seen fences in Kentucky that are made by field stones. No mortar. Just shape and fashion and stack and made. Run for miles. That are two and three hundred years old. And they're still there. Why? Because they were made that's what God is doing with his church today. Yeah. He's fitly shaping you to fit where he wants you to fit. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And all the devils and all the big bad wolf devils that are out there that are huffing and fluffing and blowing will not be able to blow you out of the house that God has built you to be with. He's going to huff and he's going to puff and you're going to be sitting there filled with the Holy Ghost and you're going to say, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin because I am fitly framed by God. I'm anointed by God. And devil, you have no more power and no authority over my life. Really? 
Really? My Bible tells me that one day we will see him for what he is and we're going to say, that's the one. That's the one. God stripped him of every bit of power he has. Amen. That's why the devil says he's as a roaring lion. Well, you don't have it up there now, but I, I love the big lion up on the, that you have on the wall. Amen. That one? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the lion of Judah, but the devil is just... He's fake. Amen. He tries to put on. But God put him down. Hallelujah. I went to the enemy's camp. You know that sound? It's in the key of G in three quarters. <laughs> it says he's like a roaring lion. In other words, he tries to look like it, but he ain't. One of my pastors years ago, he said that God was the greatest dental surgeon in history. He plucked out all of the devil's teeth. The worst he can do is gum you. We need to go. We need to storm the gates of hell and take back what the devil has stolen from us. It is time the church quit being robbed of its blessing, quit being robbed of the anointing, quit being robbed of the manifestation of miracle signs and wonders. It is time we wake up church and storm the gates of hell and take back what the enemy has taken. Amen. Hallelujah. And the song goes, and he's under my feet. That means you can stomp on him. That means you can twist. Have you ever seen anybody put out a cigarette? <laughs> Give him a stomp and a little twist. <laughs> Quit allowing the devil to defeat you. Amen. He's under our feet. He's under my feet. He's under our feet. That means we are in control. Because the Holy Ghost is in us. After all, doesn't the Bible tell us that greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world? Hallelujah. Debbie, you got it? Hoo ya! Let's stand our feet. Mm, this is a good marching song too. Mm, I went to the enemy's camp and I met what he stole from me. What he stole from me.
under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. All right, I want you to get out of your chairs, and I want you to begin to. We're going to do a little Jericho march. We're going to march around this place seven times as we sing this song. I know Israel was supposed to be quiet, but Jesus had brought back the voice to the house of God. And we're going to sing and we're going to pull down the walls of the enemy. Alright, yeah, somebody said, which way? It's good to know the direction we're going to be going in. We're going to be going in that direction. So I, 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 as I come around, you just jump in line. All right, Debbie, sing it real loud.
as I get back around to the front, and everybody else comes around and fits into the front. Remember, I, I was the first one in line. As you come back around, stand in line, and we're going to give a shout. We're going to do a hoo ya. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
them be full of strength. Let them be built up in the Holy Ghost. Let them be built up in your word. Let them be built up by prayers of saints all around them, Lord. Let them become strengthened that they can walk the same that you call them to walk. And Lord, let them walk in victory. I'm gonna 
Yes.
it was kind of like a whoosh, yeah. whoosh, oh, just running around in my spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, that is the well that has just been broken open. Yeah. Over this place. Yeah. 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 The well in this place has just been broken. And the anointing of the gushing, the geyser of God is beginning to spring forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you just reminded me of that, but the last walk we did, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I'm going to get stronger. I am stronger in Christ. I'm going to grow stronger. Amen. 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 I can't, I can't wait to see what, he, what he's going to do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. I, I, just, I just think so, uh, there's, there's an awesomeness. Okay, here, here's, here's a new word for you. Our God is awesomer. It ain't in the dictionary, but that's okay. Matter of fact, I got corrected by somebody on Facebook saying, Pastor, that's not good English. You know what I said? I don't care. My God is awesomer. He's awesomer. Hallelujah. You mind if I close in prayer? Lord, I thank you and I praise you tonight for what you've begun. I thank you for the wells that have been opened up. And Lord, now, as we leave this place tonight and we head our way, I thank you, Lord, that the angels that you've dispatched to minister to the heirs of salvation will watch over us, protect us, keep us safe, and minister to us. Holy Ghost, speak to us in the night hours. Speak to us in the slumber hours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.